This is our eighth Power Apps for Kids session. I didn't think we would get here. We have, and it's been quite good fun to do this. I think that maybe what surprised me is that we keep coming up with material that seems relevant. I think the thing that surprises me the most is that I've learned an awful lot from doing something which is supposedly for children. I think all the presenters have learned a lot because they've had to try and build apps that are simple enough for um, everyone to understand. And that's not a case of dumbing it down. It's just, you know, so we've had some really, really great apps along the way. Laura is coming back today for uh, another session. She previously uh, ran us a session where she did Hangman for um, Power Apps, which was really, really interesting. It was, it was a great session from Blank, loved it. And today we have got someone extra special with us and in the form of Brian Dang. Now, Brian Dang is kind of like, if you wanted a superhero in the world of Power Apps, Brian Dang would be that person. I'm pretty sure he's got a cape. Um, whether or not he brings it today, I don't know. But I mean, Brian is um, was very well known for um, for helping on the forum and forums. And he then I'm telling your story, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> but he got recognised so much. Not only did he re get recognised by the people from Power Apps and the people from Business Applications, but he also got to speak to um, to Bill Gates on one occasion, and, and I think that's a mark of um, of how influential Brian has been in this space. So we're really looking forward to to Brian's session later on. He's doing a, a piece on building a musical instrument. Now. What we're also going to do, I think, oops, that, that if I can now, if it's OK, hand over to Brian, because every session we do a piece where where we talk about why learn power apps. I'm actually going to just just going to whiz. Through. So uh, why learn power apps? Um, and I'm going to hand over to Brian, if that's OK. And for Brian, just to say why he thinks power apps are relevant to children. Uh, I think this this would go to not just children, but but really anybody. Um, if you look at how people's occupations and their lives have changed because of lockdowns due to coronavirus, um, what has been impacted the most? Uh, people have to work remotely, and some people, uh, they're, they're, it may be your parents, people that you know, aunts, uncles, who may have lost their job because they could not work remotely. Um, working in technology kind of overcomes that, that obstacle where many technology jobs do not require you to be there in person. And another big reason why I want people to get into learning something like creating apps is there's just too many problems out in the world um, and not enough people to solve them. If we only rely on people who have gotten a computer science degree to solve problems, uh, we're missing out on a huge pool of talent in the rest of the world, people who know what the problems are. Uh, so we can eradicate so many problems just by allowing more people to get involved. Um, so that's my gist of it. I could certainly go an entire hour showing more, but I'll hand it back to Rory. OK, we've got a little bit of feedback. So if people can mute their microphones, that'd be awesome. Thank you so much uh, for that introduction. I do you know it's one of the parts of the session that I actually like the most because I never quite know what's coming up when we start to when people that come here talk about why they think it's it's building power apps is relevant. So the point you've come up with is 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 that whole thing to do with like, we don't know the shape of the problems even now, let alone the ones in the future. And 
And so we all need to be those problem solvers. What a great point. That's fantastic. Yeah, and if um, I could piggyback just one more thing on that, Rory. Um, you know, you know, sometimes as a teacher, I would, you know, a lot of teachers ask the question to their students, what do you want to be when you grow up? And uh, the thing is, students often have this mindset that, oh, I'm just going to pick from a job that exists today. Doctor, nurse, uh, lawyer, um, uh, computer scientist, or teacher, right? They, they pick from jobs that they know. But really what I see coming in the future is every job that you know today, add some coding to it, and you have the job of the future. Because the way that I, ha I saw my teachers when I was growing up is completely different from the way that I was a teacher myself. Uh, that's, that's another huge uh, impact of learning how to code. But yeah, I'll hand it back to you, Rory. Fantastic, thank you. So now what we, we normally do is we do a, I'm just gonna jump onto the, to the, the screen which, um, where we talk about the, uh, what we're gonna actually cover in this session. So um, we're gonna do homework in Power Apps will be our next part of the session. Um, we're going to do a session six recap. I'll put Peter's name next to it, but it's OK. We'll do it together. Um, I'm going to do a little five minutes to wow, but only if we have time. We've got uh, lesson time with um, with Laura, which uh, and Laura, uh, um, she's just a brilliant tutor. I love the things that she teaches. It's fantastic. I'm totally excited about um, Brian's session to do with creating a musical instrument because people don't use the audio control enough. And um, we kind of don't have too much in the way of announcements, but we kind of actually do have a big one in, in a weird way. Um, then there's a little survey. The code for the survey isn't right, so we'll um, we'll fix that up. Um, and and then we fall off the end of the session. So what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to go to a special uh, part of this presentation. I'm going to stop sharing my screen because I'm going to hand over to Leo, who is uh, who is Peter's okay. son. And Leo is going to tell us how he was able to do his homework uh, at uh, for his school project. Uh, this time around, and it really is wonderful. And, and I know Peter put it onto Twitter, and everyone thought it was fantastic. So it'll be really great for us to see what a, what has child has been able to produce. Good. Well, this we just shared our screen. Well, you just shared the screen, so if you click that on the close to the and then it's all yours. So what I've done is. <laughs> For my homework, I had to create something, anything to do with space. So I thought, why not create a power app? It's the one way homework can be fun. So what I did was I make the was I made the planets orbit the sun, as you can see here. Also, if I press this button, so this shows that it's playing, it's pausing, as it shows up there. And I can click on any planet. For some reason it went to Saturn and and it shows facts about the planet. And then you go back, they all start moving again. Yeah. Um, oh, what's, that, what's that little thing over there that goes around the world? So, the Earth? so what I've actually managed to do is I've managed to make the moon orbit the Earth. Oh, that's quite good. As the Earth is orbiting the sun. Now, the sun actually spins round and here I did have something that wasn't very dynamic as you can see but I decided let's make it more like it looks like it's hot. Yep. So so, did you then find a, a nice picture of the yep. sun that was really hot? Now the, what you can see is the spinning. How did I do that? So what I've done is I've actually just made gifts. So, so I've just uploaded gifts into Power Apps, so that mm. I didn't have to do as much coding. Because in Power Apps, you want to make it as easy as possible, Leo, by using as less code as you can. So, if you go to these images on the left hand side, you, fi you find that oh, that's the Earth. Yep. Yeah. So that's an it image. It has some for the sort Earth. of weird image name, 
because I never, yeah, that's not needed. It's the X and Y. So okay. here. I think you should slow down for a second. So we've got the images that you first picked up. Yeah. And now you're 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 creating the location of each. Yeah. Okay. And then we've got X's and Y's. Yeah. And what do X's? What do they mean? So the X means way. Ah, okay. So yeah. horizontal. And the, and the Y means upwards. Ah, okay. So now we need to do the sums. So then here I've got a variable called bar to sun x. Mm -hmm. So that is basically looking at the the center of the the x of the sun of the sun. The okay. center of the sun. So that's the yeah. position of the sun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Of the x. If, as you can see here, that is 361. Then I'm adding the distance x. So that is the x. As I said, that's the horizontal. Yeah. And, what's the and that's the distance away from the sun. Ah, okay. Which is 400. So is that the same for all the planets? Yep. Or is that different for all the planets? Uh, but the number is different. Oh, the number is different. Okay. Um, now, I've done times because in Power Apps, it doesn't accept an X. Yep. It thinks, what is that? Yeah. So it wants to have a little... You have to have a little star. Ah, okay. Because in computers, a star is X. Well, that's quite good. And what do we get after so that? So, here, this is cosine. Yeah. So, this is where it generates a number from minus 1 to 1. And it just carries on. So, it goes minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, and it keeps going like yeah. that. So, I think then you get a bit of a yo-yo effect, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. So we're looking at planets. Yep. Now, what is planets? It is this timer here. Yeah. Um, that that actually, it's the main thing in the whole app. Okay. So what does that do then? It it just times. It's oh. just a stopwatch. Ah, a stopwatch. Oh, that's good. So that means that the cosine that's function you had earlier that's being fed with the that that number of planets. Yeah. Ah, okay. That's quite good. Um, we're taking the value of that. Yeah. Um, and we're setting, and we're using bar speed here, yeah. which is zero, but we're adding 270 to it. Oh, okay. Um, so have you run the app start thing yet? And the, yeah. Also, oh, over here, we're setting lots of variables as yes. well. So basically, at distance x, I've mm -hmm. also done one for distance y. They're yeah. actually different there, just to make it go in more of an oval. Ah, okay. I think that's why. Yeah, so um, that's quite clever. And the distances are all different, because obviously the planets don't just go at the same distance. Now, in my app, the planets do collide, simply because... Um, it's how power apps. There's happens. not enough space on yeah. the screen, is there? And I want you to at some point see every single planet. And there is actually a time when all the planets are on the screen. Ah, OK, so if you press that play button again. This one here. No, the big play button, I mean, on the, on the app. So now we can see that all the planets have got different distances <laughs> kind of thing. And I've just noticed that's to these two planets over there, the one with the uh, with the rings around it, goes in um, a different direction from lots of other and planets. Venus. Yeah, and Venus as well. Um, How did you do that then? So here, let's just go to Jupiter. Yeah. Um, I've done one minus. You got a minus uh, in the yeah. cosine, yeah? Okay. And, and one. Why is is not hasn't got a mass. Okay. Just to make it go in that way. Yeah. That's basically what it does. Then let's look at Venus. It does the same with this one here. It doesn't have a minus there. Mm. And here it doesn't have a minus. Ah, and that makes it go the Oh, that's clever. Um then with the moon, I'm using the same timer. 
but I've used a, um, obviously a different variable here, which actually is the least because mm. I am not looking at the sun anymore. Mm -hmm. I am now looking at the earth. Ah, so now you've got this, the, the, the center of the earth and you're orbiting around that. Yeah. Ah, okay, well, that's quite clever. Well, it makes it look like a very nice picture, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so I think that's most of the things done, isn't it? I'm also using the width of earth. Ah. Time divided by two. Ah, is that to get to the center bit of yeah. the picture? Because power apps with the yeah. X would, uh, with the image. Uh, would be the well, top, really, this bit. Yeah. Is so that it orbits around the Earth. Yeah, so it does the middle of the yeah. Earth rather than the. Ah, okay, yep. Yeah. So this is a bit longer because I've added that bit in. Yep. Yeah. Then we're adding the mo the moon distance mm -hmm. times again. The cosine, the planets again. Same oh, same timer. Yep. Um, so I've managed to make all the planets use the same timer. And then I'm using the VAR, the VAR speed again at 270. But yep. all of these had different ones here. Yep. Now, the reason why is because otherwise they at some point just go in one line. And that isn't what planets do. That look, doesn't look very they nice. pretty much never go into one big line. Super. Um, Leo, Leo, that's fantastic. Um, and did your um, did your school um, like what they saw? Yep. That's At brilliant. The event, with the homework competition, because it was a competition, I actually won my class and the whole year group. So Basically, that means you're better than the rest of them, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> uh, yeah, that was really good. Yeah. No, that, that's fantastic. So I'm, and and is this an app that we can share with people? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we can share it. So what we can do, Peter, is if you share it with me, and then I'll, uh, and then I can put it in GitHub and so on, and then people can, and maybe if you, if you, we could do it in time, then if you were to send it to me, then I could put it in there and pop it in the chat, and people could, you know, and people could um, start playing with it. Yeah. I'm, I'm that. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for showing that to us, uh, Leo. Um, what um, what what I'd like to do now? I don't think I'll do a huge recap, if it's okay, of the of the um, the session from last time. The 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 session from last time was uh, was one where we had um, we had Michelle did a really great piece on uh, and she did a piece on images and there were some really brilliant things and then about you brian but the things that you can get from powerpoint are fantastic you know it's it's really an un, um you know it's a hidden gem so the uh, and then and then we went on to looking at this quasi mapping uh, piece that Deepak did for us, which is really, really, it's really nice to to see how we how we did and how we made it uh, how we made it work, and even used the new map control, which is really interesting. So that that is our kind of recap of last time. I'm sort of conscious of time because it's 17:24, so five minutes to wow was going to be me. What I'm sort of thinking is that maybe what we'll do is we'll do lesson time with Laura because uh, I'm not sure how much different people's sessions will take. Um, Laura, how would you be fixed for being able to, um, how, how would you be fixed for being able to um, do your um, session? I can go now. Yeah? I, can go now. I thought I'm I would share my screen just then, by the way, and I wasn't at all. I was on the selection bit. But you, I'm sure you'll do a better job of sharing your screen than I did. Uh, I can try. I can try. No promises. It will be. Um, so I'm I'm going to do a really simple um, little introduction um, to do with some sound things, but I, I really don't want to take away from what Brian's going to be doing. Um, my screen is going to share and show the wrong things. Oh, there we go. Um, there we go. 
So I'm just going to do a really, really simple um, make a hyena laugh and also record a hello world. Okay, so I'm going to keep it really simple and then I'm sure Brian is going to take for his musical instrument, take on some of the things we're going to cover. And I have to confess, I went away to remind myself how to do this and watched a Brian video. So um, what we're going to do is I want to, so my aim is I want a picture of a hyena and I want to make it laugh, like a hyena laughs. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go, so I'm in a brand new app. I'm going to go to media and I need to upload some things into here. So I'm going to upload there on my desktop ready. So there is a hyena and there is the sound of a hyena. And click open. So I can take the picture of a hyena from in this, this media thing here and I can drag it and I can drop it onto here, which was something I learned today. I didn't <laughs> know you could do that. Yeah. There's my hyena, and I want to be able to click it, and it plays some, it plays a noise. But in order to do that, I'm going to drag and drop that noise onto there. So what's the bedding? I didn't tick that. If I press play, does that make a sound at your end? Let me just see. I think it'll only you make hear a that sound or not? if you... No, no, I think only okay, share, yep. you shared your audio as well. Yeah. yeah, that's what I've forgotten to do. That's so all right. A... I didn't so, even share my I didn't even share my screen earlier on, so you, you're <laughs> still one up on me. So, so, so I'm, I am literally just going to stop sharing for a moment and then reshare. Sure. Because um, I think it was Brian that just commented. You are right, Brian. I didn't tick that box. Yeah. Include computer sound. So if I take that back to the beginning and I press play. You hear <laughs> is, that, that? is that a hyena? <laughs> yep, that's a hyena, apparently. <laughs> so this, so let's go back to here. So really, really simple. I'm gonna keep it very, very simple. This only plays either when they click the button, but that's not what I want them to do. I want them to click the picture. Yeah. So this plays when over here, if I look in the advanced section. So I always find it. And I scroll down a little bit. And weirdly, it's under data. And I really don't understand why it's under data. But under data, there is a start and there is an auto start. And they say false. So I only want it to play when I pick the picture. So I need to have something that turns to be true. Now, I know you guys have done variables before. So we're going to click on that picture. Uh, on the action ribbon at the top here, we're going to do an on select. So the on select, what happens then? I want to set a variable. So we're going to do a set. And just to show that I, I, I really did watch Brian's video, I'm going to call it the same thing. So a, a, a variable called play audio. And we're going to set it to true. OK. So that will, so that's set up a variable and then I'm going to use that variable in my audio thing down here and we're going to put it into start play audio and I'm also going to put it into into auto start okay so now that means if I come into here and I press the I, I click on the, the picture <laughs> They are, it plays. But it leaves it. If I click on it again, it won't play again because the, the, the audio has already been played and it's at the end. OK, so what we need to do is I need to come into here. Is I need to tidy up afterwards. So your audio has some some time. So if I go to the action ribbon up here, you can see it has an on start an on pause and an on end. So I'm going to go for the on end. When you're finished, tidy up. So the tidy up is going to be, let's firstly set our variable back to false. Okay. 
And secondly, two commands. So we have to put a semicolon in between. And I'm going to put a line break in as well to make it readable. We're then going to reset this, this part here. Now, I haven't renamed anything in here. So if you go and look, it's called audio one. OK, so we can do a reset. I was very impressed by the fact that Leo named everything. Um, reset. Audio one. OK, so I'm just going to press play. I'm just going to reset this for a second, just that, just that it behaves for the first time. Click on the picture. It's not going to work because the variable's not set to false. Um, oh, of course, yeah. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cheat, OK? And I'm going to cheat by adding in a button. Uh, multiple buttons. Uh, that, that makes sense, doesn't it? And let's just put in a button here just to quickly fix it. Um, what it means is the, the, the play audio was already set to true, so it needs to change. So I'm just going to put in a false. Okay, this button won't be needed later on. It's just needed for now. So I can click that button. And now let's click on the, the hyena. And do you see it's gone back to being at the beginning again. So now I can hide all my things I don't need. OK, now that button I can actually delete because I don't think I need it again. And this audio, I'm going to go back to properties and I'm going to hide it. OK. So now when I press play, I can click on my hyena. It happens. Nobody needs to see the audio thing. It can happen or be hidden. Um, and I quite often would hide it behind a picture so that actually it's, it's obvious and it won't get in the way of anything else. Um, have I got enough time to do a quick record? Uh, I'm thinking we, we might. Move, or should we just move on to Brian? I'm thinking it's it's just gone half past, and Let's I'm thinking that yeah, I, I think there's an opportunity for us to do it like to give it a bit of like a, there's an opportunity for us to use the microphone, but we, if we did it in another um, in another lesson maybe, one day, that would give us a bit it, more time. Maybe it could be done to record Christmas messages in December exactly. or November. That would be really good, really good. And there are some tricks that we can do as well. I don't know if you've seen all the um, the uh, JSON tricks that you can do. They are quite good fun. Oh, no, I look forward to that then. Oh, I'll gosh, yeah, that. yeah. Yeah, you can tell. Just, 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 just so the people understand, literally the trick of playing audios is having, a, is having an on-off button. And my, and my play audio was my on-off button. That's, that's my lesson done. Thank you so much for doing that it was really good i i really like the way it came together at the end and how you removed all of the things from being visible on the screen and then it just you know it kind of lights up if you like that it's it just works that's really yeah. good i'm sure uh, leo would have had it kind of going around the screen kind of chasing after some wildebeest or hey, or something hey, i i'm not trying to compete with leo <laughs> I, 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 no that's I, not i'm not doing that <laughs> Nobody can compete with Leo. No, no. I, I've already given up. He can have my MVP thing. Um, I feel for his computer science teacher at senior school. They're going to have yeah, to run for their definitely. money. It's going to be entertaining, nothing else. Wonderful. Thank so you guys. I will stop sharing. So that was great. Um, I'm going to do a quick share now because we're, we're into uh, star of the show. Oh, I'm just going to do that. So every... Every week we do start. Am I sharing my screen at all? I might be. Yep, yep, you yeah. Are. So yeah. every session that we do, we have a main part of the session. In and in this session, Brian Dang is has come to be star of the show for us. And I'm gonna leave the floor open to Brian to introduce what he's going to talk about in this session. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, I am full of admiration for Brian. He's um, he's done some amazing things uh, and he's yeah, he blows my mind as to as to the things he's capable of. Wow. Here we go. <laughs> All right. 
let's go ahead and go into the the project that we're making today. I like to learn projects. Um, every time that I make a project, I, I make documentation for it. So for today, if somebody can paste this into the chat window, uh, the learning materials that you can find are at aka.ms slash kalimba. A kalimba is, also, is an instrument. It's also known as a thumb piano in some places. There are many variants of it, including the mbira. Um, now, I decided to show an instrument today because I think instruments are a good way to interact with uh, practicing working with tables. It's a good way of working with variables. So by doing this project, you'll get a little bit of exercise from that. I also want to give a shout out to Tai Chi, who's in the audience today. He is one of our members from the Japan Power Platform user group, uh, who is one of the instrument makers over there as part of the Power Apps Orchestra. Uh, he and uh, several okay. others have gone as far as doing a learning uh, lesson with the entire user group for creating uh, instruments. So I, I like this topic a lot. You take something that you are passionate about, music, and then you learn how to make apps with it. Um, all right, so let's walk through it. Inside this folder is a an HTML file with all the instructions for the very first section. This is an incomplete project on purpose so that you can customize things on your own. So you can follow along in this document as I go through these steps. Uh, you can download these files so that uh, you have them. Before I get into actually building the thing, uh, what I want to show you is how to start with the finished product. Sometimes you just want to get to the end to see what you're going to be making. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to go to make.powerapps.com. And then I create a new app. I'm going to create a new Canvas app. Um, this will let me open up a file. So if I go to Open, Browse, I can download or open up that uh, finished app file from the folder. Uh, this app has no reliance on any data sources. So you don't need SharePoint, you don't need SQL, you don't need Common Data Service, you don't need Excel. Everything that this app saves is going to be on your device. So it's using offline data. How does it work? Uh, a, this Kalimba uses touch. Now, it works a lot better on my device, of course. I don't really play my instrument on my, uh, on my, on my desktop here. But I'm going to try my best. And I have shared my audio. If the audio doesn't play, please let me know. Let's do a simple Mary Had a Little Lamb. Uh, let me reset this. So I start by clicking the reset, uh, the record button. Do you all hear that? Yeah. Yeah. That is brilliant. I didn't think <laughs> that is so good, isn't it? Oh wow. That's amazing. Yeah, uh, yeah. I like my, my favorite part is when those those notes come up. Now unfortunately, doing the math for that is a little bit more involved than I want to show on, on today's video. Uh, we will just get as far as we can. Anything else uh, that we don't get to, you can you can uh, try it on your own. Okay, so there's actually a playback feature as well. It'll play back anything that you record. I'm not going to play the whole thing again, mm. but it's a really nice experience. So the finished product is already available for you. Let's make the actual thing uh, and get as far as we can. Uh, I have the chat open on another. Please feel free to ask questions as we go along. Okay, so the first thing I do is a new app. I'm going to create this as a new uh, blank app. And I'm going to do it in a phone form factor. And that's because the kalimba as an instrument is a is a portrait. Uh, it's in portrait uh, direction. So I'm going to call this kalimba. Select the phone form factor and create. Um, now, let me show you where I got my sounds. There's a community of people who want to share the things that they've made. Now, I got these sounds from freesound.org. I'm going to paste this into the chat window. 
Um, so this is where I got my sounds. I want to give the credit to the maker, this is Arioki, who has recorded individual notes that they played on a kalimba. And I was able to use these by putting them into a table. So I download the sound files. I place the sound files. I uploaded them to uh, my storage. I've done this for. Um, and then I created a table for it. Now, Power Apps needs a table so that it can access things, right? So this particular instrument has 11 notes. The maker of these notes is Arioki, their username. The instrument is a kalimba. The different notes that I have, now I don't, I'm not a musical expert. These are the notes that um, Arioki described them as. And then the file name for actually playing the file. When I have these sound files in a table, I could show it in Power Apps so much more easily. Uh, and then just a spoiler alert, if you want to make your own sounds, you could just switch out the sounds in this Excel file. And you've got a completely new instrument. So don't feel, free, feel like you're stuck to having to make a kalimba. All right, so I've got this new app that I created. And the first thing I'm going to do is bring in that table that I have. Uh, that table is located inside that folder. It's that Excel file. I have, I'm going to go to the data, uh, that cylinder icon, do a search for Excel. And I want to import that Excel file. So I'm going to search and browse for that Excel file. Oh, I need to close it. So let me close this out. And then over in Excel, there we go. It has one table. It's the Kalimba table. I select the table and I click Connect. Now the table is inside the app, but I need to show it in a good way. And the Kalimba, if you look at a picture of it, the notes are played sideways. So I want to show that table sideways. The control that we're going to use to show it sideways is the horizontal gallery control. So I do a search for gallery, and I want a blank horizontal gallery. All right. Now, if I, if I take a look at this gallery, um, first thing I'm going to do is tell it, show me that table I made. So I click Kalimba. This makes this table show those things. But you know, you see the scroll bar? If you want to play this instrument, <laughs> you don't want to have to scroll <laughs> to try to click a note, right? Yeah. So how are we going to show every single note at once? I'm going to do a little bit of math. Uh, and we're going to use one of the new functions. Uh, well, it's a couple months old. OK, first thing I want to do is between each note, there's this thing called template padding. I don't want any space between each note, so I'm going to set that to zero. Next thing we're going to set is the template size. This is how much space does each note get? And we're going to use a function called self. I love this function. Yeah. Uh, self is yeah. Right. Rory, have you gone into your past apps and like just changed everything to self now? <laughs> no, I just, I'm, I've, wrote, I've made hundreds of apps, most of which I don't even know where they are anymore. Um, <laughs> No, no, I haven't. But it's it's uh, it's definitely um, just part of that armory of tools that we now have. I've got one thing that I do need though, but we don't have it. Um, but you carry on. All right. So I'm <laughs> going to take the entire width of that gallery. I'm going to divide it by how many things are inside that gallery. Well, I could count them up using count rows. Self again. Man, I referenced this thing called all items. So how many things are in that table? Oh, that's so clever. Yeah, there's 11 things. You could see it right there. So it takes the entire width and then divides it equally by that. And now should you have check, equal... Should we check with Leo that he understands that bit of it? Yeah, Leo, do you do you understand the Still division that's going on? Uh, yeah, it's all totally clear. <laughs> so clear. 
probably just for me that I was asking anyway. <laughs> now, so, Rory, is it totally clear to you? It actually is, but it's the all items bit that feels, it will feel strange to people um, mm -hmm. that the gallery has got contents. The contents are the things that mean that they have rows and the rows are the based on the Excel spreadsheets. The all items, it, it's a it's a peculiar but very useful thing. Um, but wrapped in that way, it's certainly, um, you know, it, but the thing is, once you've got inf information in there, it will all make sense. It's basically, you know, as you drag it wider and 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 so on, it will always be the right width. But it's fantastic, though. It's brilliant. Now I'm going to change the order a little bit, just for some uh, quick gratification. I want to see and feel that I'm making a kalimba. So from that folder of files, I have a few different images that uh, one of our friends from the community had designed these different kalimbas for me. Uh, there's one with some stickers on it. There's a plain one. I'm going to use the plain one, though. Um, you could use whichever one that you like. So I'm going to pick this flat and plain one. So as you're making an app, always want to just get the satisfaction of knowing you're getting somewhere. Now, I'm going to mm -hmm. place that uh, image in the background image. The file name is called Kalimba Plain Flat. Bam. I feel like I'm getting somewhere already. Now, I want this gallery of notes to fit right over this area. So I'm going to resize it. See, I'm dragging these knobs over. And I'm going to make sure it fits just the right size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other reason why I changed the order is I just want to put these notes in. OK, maybe about here. Next thing we're going to do is click and drag a button. How am I going to actually interact with this kalimba? I click and drag, and I'm doing it slowly on purpose. You could see a little purple border up here. This is where I drop this button. It needs to go inside that gallery. By default, the button says button, and that's not very helpful. I want, to tell, I want it to show me the name of that, uh, that note. So I change its text property to this item, dot note. Next thing you'll notice is the text kind of appears too big in there. So I'm going to change the font size to about 14. I think that's should be more than adequate. Now I'm going somewhere. OK. So how do I actually play the note? Um, I remember Matt has shown us how to work with collections. Um, Shane has also done that in his demo. So I with this button selected, I'm going to tell it collect to this thing that I'm calling notes. This item. So anytime that I click one of these buttons, so I'm going to populate it a few times. Anytime that I click it, it holds those notes. So I play this note, this note, and this note. Great. How do I actually hear the sound, though? This is where we're getting into the audio that um, uh, that Laura was walking us through a little bit. So I'm going to use what's called a, a gallery inside a gallery, also known as a, a nested gallery. Um, I will click and drag a blank vertical gallery into this existing gallery. So this is going to let me hold all of the notes of this type in this gallery. So all the, every time that I play F2, I want those notes to play here. Um, just do a quick cleanup first, though. I don't like that scroll bar, so I'm going to turn that scroll bar off. And I'm going to turn the template padding to zero. And then here's the magical part. I am going to click and drag an audio control, searching for audio. Click and drag the audio control in there few different levels of controls now. We have this audio control inside a gallery. And then this gallery inside the, total, the, the, the overall gallery. All right, a couple things to change first. This gallery needs to show the, the inside gallery, the nest gallery. It needs to show the notes. But not just any, I don't want to show every single note. I want to show for this 
for this one, I want to filter it so that it shows me the notes that are equal to the respective note. Again, when I click C4, I want to show all the notes uh, that I've played for C4. You can see that I have not played A3. I have played D3, BB2, and BB3. All right. We're not completely ready yet. How do I actually play the sound file? Um, now, uh, Laura showed us how to use an uploaded file for the URL, uh, for, the, for the audio. We are going to use the respective um, file name that we have in the table. Let me just jump back to the table real fast. Uh, the file name is actually a wave file. So I can, I can uh, pull up that wave file uh, without needing to put it into the app. All right, we're almost there. Almost about to get the satisfaction of finishing this up. Mm. A uh, couple tweaks here. Laura showed us how to make the file play with a variable. We want this audio to play immediately as soon as I click that button. So I'm just going to turn auto start to true. Um, and you can you can hear the, the sounds that have already played. Was that all okay. of them just then? Yeah, it was all of them right there yeah. because uh, they yeah. were off by default. Yeah, it's good then. All right. I think. There's one more thing I'll do. I want to show all the notes at once. So with the gallery selected, I'm going to change the template size property to just zero. It's going to show all of the notes stacked on top of another. All right, let's play this. I think we're ready. <laughs> OK, so if I were to click this, it works. And that's that amazing. That's the basic minimum uh, minimum viable product for a Kalimba. Uh, so we're coming close to time here. I do want to make sure that I leave you time for uh, announcements. Um, uh, there are there's more that we could obviously do. Um, let me just do one quick thing. Let's let's clear the notes that we've played. I insert a button and. I double click the button to change its text. I want to make it clear. And then it's what does it do? Select, I want it to clear the collection that we're calling notes. There we go. So if I were to click that, it clears all the notes that I played. So I'm ready to play again. Um, but because this is a digital instrument, you will want to incorporate some of the ways of recording and playing back. Um, all right, uh, let's take some questions and then we could hand it off to Rory for some announcements. So with this, with this, what questions do you have about this Kalimba? Uh, let's open it up. So if people want to unmute themselves, they can do so and ask Brian uh, a question. Um, I'm, I'm certainly fascinated by what we've seen. Do I have any requests? <laughs> any music requests? Oh. <laughs> Three blind mice? Three blind mice. Let me see. I think it starts. That's it. <laughs> Is that three blind mice? That's close, isn't it? <laughs> that's that's one of the songs. That's one of the the songs that you play in uh, like fourth grade. <laughs> but do you remember they had? Um, I'm not saying do you remember, but like you know, in the old films, they would have this one of these hand organ. Th what do they call them? They they had a name for them, and um, they would turn the handle around, and because it had this paper thing inside, it would do the dings, and it would play a tune for you so effectively it was a pre-recording of an actual uh of an actual boxes. Tune. music or boxes they... have have cylinders with no, with with little spikes that will do the, the plucking so yeah. they're in the right places uh -huh. to play the tunes 
that's how music boxes work. And um, I love how, oh, I just love how Laura brought that up because music is one of the first things that people got into coding with, right? You're, you're programming a sequence of things to be played at a certain time. That's coding. <laughs> There's so much that you can get from music uh, and coding. And can I can I can I bring people back to something that Brian said right at the beginning of his session, which was about um, the orchestra. And I know there's some people here from it. Um, if you haven't yet seen the video of them doing it, um, Brian is putting Brian is going to go and find it now. It is awesome. Um, what they have done um, to to get. Um, a, the, the orchestra, they, they, they do brilliant things. I'll just play a, a, like a couple seconds of it and then uh, we'll bring it back to Rory. This is Ode to Joy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just pause it right there. <laughs> you can watch the entire thing. I'll paste this into the chat window. That is so, it's so funny when you start watching these things, though. Even if you're busy, you sort of think, oh, he stopped it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny, though, isn't it? Um, yeah, um, music is amazing, isn't it? I love Craig's question, by the way. Mm. And I for you, Brian. Mm -hmm. Is can you it is it can you take recording? To, to do it through a, to feed it music through a spreadsheet yeah you know what if you if you put in the timings in a spreadsheet and the name of the note you certainly can uh programmatically play the table yeah very much so. can we get ai builder to read the music what do you think uh let's see can AI Builder read it? Uh, you would need to train like the location of a note against the uh, against the scale. That's beyond my skills <laughs> right now. So, but do, do you know what I? And by the way, um, I'm almost certain that Craig has never done any power apps until today, because um, I, I put something onto YouTube today, and poor poor Craig ended up watching at least some of it. Um, I don't know if he's seen Power Apps before, um, and since then he's obviously come on to here. And I think that's wonderful, the whole community thing, that that people can just just work their way into a, into a community. Um, yeah, look at that. Craig, he's never, used, he's never used Power Apps until today. Reminds me, uh, there are significant uh, number of samples that have been shared by June Kunichi. Uh, from our uh, from our community, he's put up like six instruments, at least, uh, and I'm pasting a a link that you could already download things like a, a piano. I think he's got a, a, a trombone. They're already available, and that's amazing. <laughs> so I think my answer to Craig's uh, Craig his his question was around: Can we put it in via a spreadsheet? But I think that the the alternate way of doing it is to actually play it through the app to produce the data that then you can play back at a later date. I think that's an I'm going to almost describe it as a slightly easier way of of doing it. So you don't have to programmatically work anything out. You just play it and you go, well, I've got it wrong. You can just play it again until you kind of get it right, and then you can play it back programmatically to yourself. Um, so many options, of course. Yeah, and that's how the uh, the finished uh, app works. So you can check that out, Craig. Uh, and I guess now that we've uh, now that we've got um, now that we've got the um, uh, Power Apps and Teams integration, that offers possibilities for us to have data sets that people can make. It's it's a slightly different thing, though, isn't it? Because Excel is actually kind of handy because it, you can just push things in. Whereas um, with the Teams integration, you have to kind of build the schemas yourself um, uh, each time, but still cool. 
Mm-hmm. So we are coming to the end of the the show at this point in time, and uh, as um, uh, as Brian was saying, some announcements. So what I think I'll do is I'll share my screen, um, and just pop the do a desktop and. Then we'll go on to my screen, share my screen, and then come out of there. Um, I'm sharing something. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm sharing something. Could be anything. Um, so we'll go back to here. So here's the announcement that our very first global event is taking place. And I say global. Basically, um, Elaine and a number of other people from Australia are running event an, an event this Saturday, but it is at um, it is at a, a kind of um, unhealthy hour for us in the UK. Um, I'm just going to sh- share my screen because I want it to, pe- to make it easy for people to to get to the event. So I'm just going to pop that on the screen there. And just show that if you go to Power Apps for Kids, hopefully you can see that. Uh, can everyone see that? Yeah. PowerAppsforKids.com, yeah. register for next event. Then there's the APAC Asia Pacific, Saturday, October the 17th. You click through on that, and then that will take you through to the meetup. And you can actually see that they've got a um, uh, that they've got a link to uh, to join there. And no doubt they will be having some really interesting content and and what i'd also say that if anybody else wants to run a power apps for kids event we have materials that can help just make it a little bit easier for you to get started and obviously anyone that has been involved in this so we've got people in the uk and netherlands we've got people in canada and the united states um, we are available to help you get started. It could be that you want to do something at school and you just need a bit of a help in hand, maybe a few pointers as to what to get started with. So we can we can help with that. Um, so that the final, so I guess the final thing is, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen again and just talk about the the survey. So the survey, I'll just pop that on the screen because the the code I've got for it isn't quite right. Emma, um, can you remind me of the code that people need to use for today, please? Yeah, sure. So it's one one nine two six. So so that's aka dot ms forward slash reactor. And do you know what? Uh, I know it's survey. So I bet I put, I'll put that into the chat actually. So if we pop that in the chat, uh, that should hopefully take us out. Close that down. Does anyone else have any any things they want to say? Peter, Laura, um, thank you so much for for all of you coming on. The support that you guys give me and 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 everyone is is fantastic and it's much appreciated. So thank you for coming on. Um, any any thoughts you have on today's well, i think it's yeah. quite amazing if you look at where everybody's coming from i think we've had a truly global session today where people are from all over the world so that's quite amazing i think i think our most at one time was 20. yeah there are lots of people today. in there didn't they yeah yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's well. That's great to hear. I mean, I don't think I put the end um, the survey incorrectly, by the way. Um, oh, we've had someone from Texas. That's great. And um, see, but I think you may have sent me a note earlier on, so I'll try and pick up on on that. Yeah, thank you for everyone coming on today's session. Uh, a huge thank you to Leo for that wonderful uh, demonstration of putting us all in our place um, as to how the um, how the um, the planets orbit the sun. I I I did one where I did a multilingual thing. I wanted this is what I want to do, right? Next next time round, okay. What we're going to do is we are going to kick off in November something about how um, a, a session where we start to build Christmas cards. That's what we're going to do. 
and I'm really looking forward on that particular one for to see what children are able to produce. I don't know about you, Peter, but I think we should probably try if we can and turn it into a, a competition, like something where where you know we we not say hey produce something amazing for us it would be so neat i know what i'm going to enter it that's for sure because i'm a big kid <laughs> and we have and we have um we have got um let me just look at the time yep gone over and um, we've got halloween coming up so what i'll do before i go if i can is i will just put into the chat a a link to an app that I made a while ago, and it's actually a Halloween app. So you know Minesweeper, where, you, where you're trying to find the bombs and it tells you where they are and so on. Well, I've done a Halloween version of it, and you're trying to find, I can't remember, I think it's like schools. You're trying to find the cauldrons uh, so that you don't get put in the cauldron, something like that. Anyway, I've done that for that. So I'll put a link for that, um, and uh, people can have a bit of fun with that. Other than that, we've come to the end of the session. So thank you so much for everyone joining us and, and we will see you again next time. And thank you, Brian, for doing that wonderful um, demonstration of how to build a kalimba musical instrument. Over to you, Emma. Great, thank you, Rory. And thank you to all of our fantastic speakers on today's session. Um, love seeing what you're doing um, and there's always something new happening on these sessions which is great to see um, really looking forward to the next session that will go on to meet up shortly so I believe uh, we agreed 17th of November um, but we can we'll, we'll, we'll post that shortly anyway so do look out for it sure. um, as I mentioned this session was recorded so I'll be sending that over, Rory, to you for you to post up on your website for people to watch. Brilliant. Great. OK, thank you, everyone, for getting involved um, and enjoy the rest of your day, night, wherever you are joining from and see you at the next session. Good. Thanks, everyone. Bye, all. Thank Good you. night, guys. Bye.